What's going on? I'm FPL Inzaghi and welcome to my team selection video for Blank Game Week 26. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button and hit subscribe as well. I've been reading the comments in the videos lately. It's great to see so many new people checking out the content and enjoying it. So if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. We are trying to hit 4 thousand subscribers let's talk very quickly about double game week 25 how that went for me i know for a lot of managers double game week 25 did not go so well let me know in the comment section below how it went for you uh, and how you're looking for game week 26 have you made your transfers already i'm very keen to hear about how people are navigating the blanks and the doubles to come with free hits and wild cards at play it's very interesting to see so many teams going their own way with their strategy I think we're going to start to see some big rank rises, hopefully, and no big rank falls from a lot of us in the next couple of weeks. But for me, in Double Game Week 25, I went in with just five Double Game Week players. I had Triple City, I had Luis Diaz, and I had Darwin Nunes. And I think I got pretty lucky. Uh, we'll see in a moment from FPL Optimize that, in fact, I did get pretty lucky this week. I didn't have Jota, I didn't have KDB, I didn't have Ake, I, I did have Darwin, uh, but I... I really dodged a lot of pain in Double Game Week 25. Jota started off really well. He got an assist. He was looking good in that game. Liverpool dominated Luton at home. I think if Jota was playing in that game, he definitely would have at least got one attacking return. KDB as well. We know how potent he can be. He only played one game in the double. So I did get quite lucky in the end. And the Double Game Week players that I did have, Kyle Walker and Luis Diaz in particular, who were differentials, they came through through for me, Kyle Walker with two starts. That's right. Kyle Walker started both games in the double game week. He got an assist in the first and I think two bonus points. Very jammy. I, I will say that. Very jammy assist. And then in the second game, uh, he got himself a clean sheet. Now, he was almost on for a monster haul when he assisted uh, Harlan's goal in that second game against Brentford. Uh, City were... Uh, they were on for a clean sheet at the time, uh, and he was looking like getting at least one bonus point. He was potentially going to get two if he got that assist. So he was going on for a huge haul, but he didn't get it. He was just offside, and then he got a yellow card about a minute later, and he dropped out of the bonus points completely. But I won't complain. 12 points is great. Luis Diaz had so many chances to score against Luton. I'm thankfully... I'm thankful that he did score one goal, but he could have scored so much more. But look, overall... I'm very happy with how Double Game Week 25 went, of course. Uh, Erling Haaland, triple captain. 10, in my mind, is just a pass. It's like a conceded pass. If you ever got one of those at university, I'm not displeased. Uh, I wouldn't see it as a fail, but it, yeah. On a triple captain, Erling Haaland, two fixtures at home, you probably would expect a little bit more, uh, but we'll take it. 30 points, we move on. Uh, 107 points points in a double game week 25 and we're up to 41k now so we are absolutely flying it was a very good week uh, i'm in a good position so far so let's look ahead to game week 26 before we do that, I just want to very quickly talk about this graphic from FPL Optimize. You can find this on FPL Optimize on the internet. You just need to punch in your team ID, go to Season Highlights. And what this graphic is showing you is the blue line uh, is your realized points in relation to the top kind of 1,000 managers. Uh, and, and that zero baseline there is what is expected from the top 1,000 managers across a full season. Now, I think from what I've heard, typically that zero baseline finishes around 40 to 50K uh, on average. So if your uh, realized points is above the baseline there, then you should be looking to finish inside the top 40K, which is good news. Um, but often we don't get the realized points that we deserve, even though our decision making might have been good. So that's the yellow slash green line. That's the predicted points. So based on the decisions that I've made, the players that I've brought in, the players that I've sold, who's in my team each week, um, that line is showing you my predicted points in relation to that top kind of 1000 managers. And as you can see for most of this season, despite making some good decisions, I've been not realizing 
those expected points or the predicted points. So I've been kind of unlucky. I'm going to claim that. I'm going to say that I've been unlucky because I think this graph proves it. But in recent weeks, you can start to see that blue line trending upwards, getting a getting much closer to my predicted points, which is nice to see. So hopefully we can continue to move in that direction for the rest of the season. Go ahead and take a look at go ahead and take a look at your own season highlights graph on FPL optimized on the internet. All right, let's look ahead to game week 26 with some team data to start. Now, Arsenal at the moment, they are the best in the league across the last six matches for the defensive stats and for their attacking stats. So we'll just look at the defensive stats on the left to start. So across the last six, Arsenal have a minutes per XG conceded non-penalty of 199. That is more than double better than what Manchester City have, which is mind-blowing. It just shows you right now how good the Arsenal defense is. And I think if you're free hitting in 29, getting an Arsenal defender is a priority if you don't already have one. And I think if you've only got one, getting two is probably the way to go. At the moment, we expect Arsenal to double in 34 as well. So Arsenal defensively are definitely a team to be investing in at the moment, especially if you're looking to free hit in 29. Nottingham Forest, uh, very interesting that they are the second best for XG non-penalty, XGC non-penalty, I should say, but they have conceded something like 10 goals in the last six matches, despite expecting to concede around five. Um, and I guess what that shows is Nottingham Forest as a team, they do make a lot of mistakes, and I don't think they've sorted out the goalkeeper issues yet. Sells does look a lot better, and perhaps we'll see Forest keep some more clean sheets or at least keep some more goals out in the upcoming fixtures, but... Yeah, I think with Nottingham Forest, despite good underlying stats, I don't know if I trust their defense just yet. A City, Brighton, Bournemouth are there. If we're looking to invest in Bournemouth defenders for their double in 28. Uh, moving down, Manchester United, Liverpool's defense not looking too great. It does coincide with a couple of injuries to Trent. Uh, and Kelleher's come in now in place of Allison. So I just don't know if the Liverpool's defense is something that we want to hold on to long term. Uh, looking down the list right at the bottom there, Brentford, Newcastle, Luton, and West Ham. A lot of those teams are teams that we're looking at at the moment. We're looking at Brentford, the likes of Regulon, because they play all of these fixtures. We're looking at West Ham, because they play in game week 29. Luton have a double in 28. We're looking at Alfie Doughty. Some people are going even cheaper with Bell or Mengi. And defensively, I, I just think... Uh, unless you're going for someone like Alfie Doughty, I would avoid the Luton defense. You need to be targeting defenders who have that attacking upside. And Newcastle there, I've got Kieran Trippier in my team this week, but I'm seriously considering taking a hit to bench him or potentially bench uh, Charlie Taylor there from Burnley because both of those players play for a team who defensively in the last six have been really poor, especially Newcastle with an XGC of 38. That's like two and a half goals per game that they're expected to concede. That's incredibly high for Newcastle. So I think that their defense is certainly a void. If you've got Debravka, if you've got um, you know the likes of uh, Botman or Trippier, then I think we need to start thinking about how we can move off these guys, especially Debravka. I'd be looking at someone like Kaminsky or even Raya in goals or Neto from Bournemouth as a goalkeeper who doubles in 28. I just think that the Newcastle defense is something to avoid. Looking at the attacking stats, Arsenal again on top, Liverpool there. Despite the injuries with Salah, Jota, Darwin Nunes now, uh, I think Liverpool as an attacking team, especially at Anfield, uh, are really strong. Look, they've scored 20 goals from an XG of 13.8. So despite missing chances, Luis Diaz against Luton, they have been scoring a lot of goals of late. Man City, Aston Villa, and Luton. So it's interesting to just compare Luton's attacking and defensive stats. I, I think what they're doing at the moment in the style of play is that they are generating some good attacking opportunities, but they're certainly not sitting back in that defensive low block that we're seeing from the likes of Sheffield United. And it might be costing them uh, in terms of their defensive stats, but perhaps Luton feel as though with 12 goals scored in the last six, that they are able to potentially score enough goals to, to get them out of trouble. But yeah, I think we'll have to wait on that and see how Adebayo's injury affects them. 
Man United there. I am looking at a United attacker in the short term. Bruno Garnacho, or even Hoyland before I potentially wildcard. Uh, Wolves, they're a team that a lot of people are looking at this week with Huang Hee Chan and Neto. They've got Sheffield United, a great fixture. Then they've got Newcastle away defensively. Again, that's potentially a great fixture. And then Fulham. So in the next three, Wolves do have some really good fixtures from an attacking perspective. Right down the bottom, Brentford. Uh, sorry, Burnley, West Ham, Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest, Sheffield United, these teams, certainly teams to avoid to avoid from an attacking perspective. And, you know, if, if I'm considering benching Charlie Taylor, yes, Burnley don't have uh, a great defence, but Crystal Palace's attack in recent weeks, an XG of just four, Elise and Eze are still out injured, then, yeah, I think I feel okay about playing Charlie Taylor this week. All right, let's take a look at the team for game week 26. Now, I have already made one free transfer, but we'll start off at the back. I've got Raya in goals, Walker, Saliba, Trippier, and Charlie Taylor. You can see that I've got no bench. Ariola is there, but no playing bench for my outfield players. Kyle Walker, I'm confident he will start. Uh, the predicted lineup from Luke is suggesting that Kyle Walker will again play. That Pep will probably go with a very similar team to the one that demolished Bournemouth 6-0 at the Etihad last time. And Walker did play in that team. I think he's been uh, really good for City in, in terms of giving them width on the right-hand side and allowing the likes of Foden to come inside. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen with the rest and rotation. Foden's played a lot of minutes recently. Alvarez has started every game. From what we've seen with De Bruyne, the news that I've heard recently is that De Bruyne did not train fully the other day, and then he took part in parts of training. He is expected to be fit for the United game, uh, the Manchester uh, Manchester derby, uh, in the following game week, game week 27. But will he start against Bournemouth away? I'm not confident of that. If I had De Bruyne, I would be looking for a team leak. Um, but I think at this point, it's unlikely that De Bruyne will start. But... I am hopeful and confident that Kyle Walker starts. Saliba and Trippier, they're playing each other. I think Newcastle, what we just saw with their defensive stats, I think Arsenal will score quite a few goals in that game. But Newcastle are a threat. And I'm not entirely confident of a clean sheet for Arsenal. They do find ways to concede soft goals. And I think they might be vulnerable to the counter-attack with the likes of Anthony Gordon there. Uh, Charlie Taylor, I mentioned him. Crystal Palaces as an attack, the last six are the worst in the league. And I am debating whether to take a minus four to bench either Trippier or Taylor. Now, the transfer that I have made is in midfield. Foden is there, Louise is there, but I have brought Huang Yi Chan in. I made the transfer before his price rise. I sold uh, Luis Diaz. Thank you for your 12 points in the double, Luis Diaz. Uh, but he has left the team. Uh, and Saka uh, is there, of course, as well. Playing Newcastle at home, a good fixture. Potentially a captain option as well this week. So is Huang Yi Chan playing against Sheffield United at home. Good fixtures for my midfielders. I'm confident, again, that Foden starts. I, I think with the issues for De Bruyne, it kind of swings the start in Foden's favour. Uh, I just think um, if if De Bruyne is not going to be risked, uh, then if Pep wants to play with these kind of two tens, it'll be Alvarez and Foden, probably Bernardo Silva out on the right. Uh, but Pep can do anything uh, and we'll just have to wait and see. If he is benched, then I think he comes on and I'm not sure I want to take a hit for him. Uh, at this stage. Uh, Douglas Louise, uh, good fixture. Nottingham Forest at home. We did see that defensively, they've been quite strong despite conceding goals. So I wonder whether he might be able to profit from some set pieces because Nottingham Forest have struggled to uh, stop conceding goals from set pieces. And Douglas Louise is, of course, on set pieces for Aston Villa. So it's good that I've got him there in the team. And then Haaland and Watkins up front. Haaland very likely to have the captain's armband for me at this stage. So the transfer that I've already made is Luis Diaz to Wang Yi Chan. That makes sense. But there's a couple of other transfers that I'm considering. One is for a minus four which will shift my formation to a 3-4-3, it would be Darwin Nunes to Rasmus Hoyland. Now, I am at this point still leaning towards wildcard 27. And if I was to wildcard 27, it kind of gives me a free hit option this week. And that means that I'm looking at just a one-week punt. And Manchester United against Fulham, who don't have Jao Polina, I think is a good punt. Um, for some attacking points this week. So the first player I'm considering is Hoyland. I would bench Trippier in that sense. So the question I have to answer is, does Rasmus Hoyland outscore Trippier or Taylor by four points or more this week? I think 
It's probably easy to say yes. I don't think Newcastle keep a clean sheet, but does Trippier get an attacking return? He very well could. Uh, and if he was to get an attacking return, it could mean bonus points as well. Um, but if Arsenal is scoring two goals, then then obviously Trippier starts losing points. So there is a risk there. Charlie Taylor will Burnley concede. I think that they've got a similar chance of conceding to Newcastle, but his attacking threat isn't as good. So maybe I bench Charlie Taylor and Rasmus Hoyland. I think he's probably got a, a good chance of scoring more than Taylor or Trippier by four points this week. The other option is to shift to a 3-5-2 and to go Richarlson to Bruno Fernandes. And this is probably the one that I'm favoring more, actually. Uh, without Jao Polina there, in the center of midfield, I just think that that will create a real issue for Fulham. And that uh, that's the space that Bruno Fernandes is occupying at the moment. He's on penalties, where he should be. He's on a lot of set pieces. Luke Shaw is not going to be playing. So I think that Bruno Fernandes will be taking a lot of set pieces for United. Dallo could potentially take some as well, but I, I just think that with Bruno, you've got that penalties, you've got the set pieces there as well. If things aren't going right in open play, if you've got someone who's on penalties, that just is an added bonus. So that's what I'm thinking about. I don't need to take the minus four. If we go back to the team that I had um, with just free transfers, I've got 11 this week without taking a hit, and a lot of people will be taking a hit this week. So preserving the minus four will probably mean that I'm on a green arrow straight away and I'm wild carding next week as well. So I really do need the hit to pay off in one week. But with United playing Fulham at home and with a couple of other nice fixtures, I do fancy having a little bit of a punt on Bruno or Rasmus Hoyland. There is another option and that is if I decide I don't want to wild card in 27. Um, I could go Darwin to Solanke, but does Solanke outscore Taylor or Trippier by four against City uh, this week? Probably not. And so I think I would just leave that transfer for the following week. So a little bit confusing, but I have made one transfer bringing Huang Hee Chan in. I'm going to be captaining Haaland, and I'm very likely to take a minus four for Bruno Fernandes or Rasmus Hoyland. Garnacho potentially, but uh, Bruno is just always there. Reliable for minutes. He's going to play 90 minutes. He's on penalties and set pieces as well. So that's kind of where I'm leaning as a one-week punt before the wild card. Let me know in the comment section below what transfers you're making. Make sure you hit that like button as well and hit subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow for my deadline stream. So come along to the deadline stream, bring your team IDs. And what I do, if you don't know this on the deadline stream, I get you to chuck in your team IDs and then I flash your team up on fpl.team and I run through what my suggested transfers and potential transfer plan would be for your team. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, get involved in that. That's for the deadline stream. Hit the like button on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow.